Hello, Randy Rain here, and this is a second video about my animatronic frog that I built around a pickaxe jet. It's able to be programmed using DTM F tones, and so all you have to do is create an MP3 file with the right side having the audio for the frog and the left side for the DTM F tones, which is why in the previous video, I show you the only actual stereo MP3 player I could find. All the other ones are in mono, so check that out if you haven't seen that. And so from the MP3 player, the right side is going to a amplifier and a speaker, and the left side is going to this MT8870 DTMF decoder module. So just to clarify, DTMF tones are dual tone multiple frequency, and basically it's the tones from your telephone. There are 16 different tones, and they stand for zero through nine. Then there's the pound sign, is now called a hashtag. And then there's the star. And then there's four other ones called A, B, C, and D. Now you can see on here there is an audio jack. So that could be your input. And on my frog, I kept it. So anytime I can plug into there and just put DTMF tones in it, from some other source and it will move. It doesn't have to be from the MP3 player. There's another input on the pinout. So let's look at the pinout. Okay, we'll start from the very right. And the first pin is just your positive, your VCC. The next pin is your negative, that's your ground. The third pin is in, and that's your input. That's the exact same thing as the audio jack. The next two, you see it says STQ and STQ with lines over the top. These are both the same thing. They're just inverted of each other. And this is the signal when it detects a tone. So the regular STQ will go high when a tone is detected. The STQ with the line over it will go negative when a tone is detected. The next four is Q4, Q3, Q2, and Q1. And these are basically your data. And since there's 16 different tones, and you have four different pins, and each one of these pins can be high and low, that gives you 16 different outputs. So when this detects a tone, that SDQ will go high for a little while and then go low. The SDQ with line over it is already positive, and it goes low for a little while and then goes back to being positive. And then the Q1 through 4 will light up in the different patterns of one of the 16. So if you wanted it to work like a phone, you'd have something waiting for that STQ signal. And whenever it got the STQ signal, it would look at Q1 through Q4 and see what the tone was. And so the reason you would do that is, let's say, there's two of the same signals. That means the Q1 through Q4 would never change. And so the only way to know that it was a new signal would be through the STQ. But that's only if you're sending data where you need to use the same tone back to back. For mine, I did not need to do that because there's only 12 positions that the frog uses. And I have 16 options here. And so my frog doesn't even use the SDQ. So all I've done is program a pickaxe chip to look at Q1 through Q4 there. And every time it changes, it knows it needs to do the next thing. And it would never be the same tone back to back. But if you wanted to do more than 16, you would have to send some sort of serial data. And you would need to use the SDQ. So yeah, this is pretty simple, so let's see it in action. Okay, this is the setup. I have power going to this pickaxe chip, positive. Everything else is going to ground, except for pin B0, which is the serial out, which is going to this player. See the other video about making that work. This is where it was left off, and this is where the DTMF decoder comes in. Positive and negative are here. And then this is the input. And then I'll do Q1 through 4. 
I'm going to bring them into here, C0, C1, C2, and C3, so I can get these off of ground. Okay, so I've cleared out these four pins here, and the first thing I need to do is ground them all again with 10K resistors. There. These will be pull down resistors. So there, those are all pulled down to ground. I'm going to use some 1K resistors to jump to each one. Q1 is going to go to C0. Then I'm going to do some jumpers this way to make it easy on myself. Then make this one go to here. So now C0 has Q1, C1 has Q2, C2 has Q3, and C3 has Q4, all going through a 1K resistor. Now we can detect these tones, but we need some output here. So I'm going to get rid of these two, put a couple of LEDs here. One side's going to go to ground, then I'm going to use a 330 ohm resistor because I'm putting out 5 volts here and that's too much for the LED. So we have inputting all through here and then we're going to output through these two pins. This is where we left off on the last one. Go see the other video on how all this works with the player. We're going to work on this little do loop right here. So the first thing we're going to add to is up here is we're going to add another variable. It just needs to be a byte and we'll call it DTMF code. Now if we put in this loop here, DTMF code equals pins C, all of them, and this here, which we're only grabbing these four right here. We're grabbing all these four as a binary number. And now once we have that as a binary number, we can do a select case here and put DTMF code as the variable. And so now we can do this, case one. This is if we pushed the one button, we could go high B5, we'll pause for however long that is. We have the frequency change, so if that is not six seconds. It should be more like three. Then we'll go low B5. Now we can go case two. We will do the same thing. High B4, pause 6,000, and then low B4. And we could go on and on with all the different cases. Let's take our chip, put in the programmer, program, so I have a cord hooked up to my headphones on my computer, so I'm going to plug it into the DTMF decoder, that worked, one, there it goes, one making good connection. All right, so there's, so I'll go to D. Now, D is all zeros. And so one turns that on and turn it off as D. Two should turn the other one on. So this one will have it right. One's correct, right? What will I have wrong? Oh, so that's two, so that's four. So case two, so they don't actually go uh, correspond with the actual numbers, but you have 16 different tones here, and you can now do 16 different things. Let's go back to here. It's case three, I don't know what number that is. Let's make it go sub play track. So that one is going to play the player. So let's see that in action. And yeah, program.
So one of these should play. Not three. It's not eight. It's five. Plays the frogs. Now that's one side. On the other side, it's the DTMF tones. That's the DTMF tones that are going to program the frog. And that's what I want to go into here, not from my computer. So let's look at that. Well, that's where this signal comes in. That's the exact same thing as plugging it in. So I'm going to use a capacitor. It really doesn't matter. Something like this all the way up to one is fine. I'm going to put it on the input there. That to play the frog sounds that come out of the speaker. This is the DTM F tones here. So they're going to go into there. So now I'm sending the DTM F tones from the player into here. All right, so let's look at the code that I changed up. Again, if you want to know what the set frequency and the calibrate frequency and all that, go check the other video. What we're looking at here is now I'm going to go ahead and play the track. So it's going to play the track before it goes into the do loop. And now this do loop here, getting the value of the four pins and creating a binary number, and it's going to be from 0 to 15. And so we can do all these cases. These are all the different things that we can do. And I've just made them blink the LEDs at different rates. You can see there's a different amounts of pause on all of these that I put in. It's just going to keep repeating that. So every time it plays a note on the MP3 player, it should make one of these LEDs do something. So let's pop this chip out. And program that. All right, let's see what happens. And that's it. Now it's going to keep looping right there on that one. So if you imagine instead of LEDs, it's going to be servos. That's how my frog's going to work. And how to do the servos is next. So there it is, the MT8870 DTMF decoder with a pickaxe chip. It's all in my little frog here. And so the next video is going to be how to use this in making the servos move. Anyway, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff, hit the subscribe button. I want to thank these people. These are the patrons. These are the people bringing you this stuff. And I couldn't do any of this stuff without them. So I thank them oh so very much. And if you'd like to become a patron and whatnot, there's links and perks. So please go check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching.